think about the things that cause climate change, there's one source that's often overlooked, our food. Agriculture accounts for a quarter of greenhouse gas emissions every year. And the single biggest contributor to that is livestock. Throughout their lives, cows and sheep create large amounts of methane, nitrous oxide, and CO2, contributing more emissions than any other plant or animal-based protein. Just 100 grams of beef, which is about the size of a single quarter pounder, contributes the equivalent of 50 kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions. It's about the same amount released by a person driving 126 miles in a car. With human populations and wealth rising, global demand for meat is expected to grow. So farmers and scientists alike are looking for new ways to not only reduce the impact of cows on climate, but to reverse the damage that they have done. And one of the proposed solutions with the potential to do just that, well, it starts with growing better grass. Dollar, dollar, dollar. Hey guys, come on. If we can grow good grass, we're gonna have great cows. Michael Heller has been raising beef cattle and sheep for more than 30 years at Claggett Farm, just outside of Washington, D.C. But he often thinks of himself as a grass farmer first. Cows are cows, so they were designed to eat grass. To give them really good grass, I have to think about the grass first and use the cows as the tool to grow really good grass. On his farm, Heller uses a technique called adaptive multi-paddock grazing, or amp grazing for short relying on simple electric fences to move and contain his cows on small areas of land. I've got 60 paddocks for these cows. I have other paddocks for other cows. And that means I can rest the fields um, for up to 60 days, which is ideal. When I first came to this farm, I took soil samples, the organic matter levels, we're about 1% to 1.3%. Doesn't mean much to you until you hear, today, this field probably has 45 to 5% organic matter. That means we've increased it four times. Amp grazing has one other advantage. It increases the soil's ability to store carbon. The um, cows are making for really wonderful grass, which will then sequester that uh, carbon from the atmosphere. If there were no cows here, it would be growing up in weeds and it would not be nearly as effective uh, at producing biomass. And biomass is what we need to produce because that's storing the carbon and sending it down to the roots where it then gets stored in the soil. In the past, many researchers have concluded that grass-fed beef is worse for climate because cows that eat grass tend to produce more methane than those that eat grains and are raised on feedlots. But improvements in soil health can dramatically change what the carbon footprint of cows looks like. Researchers at Michigan State University who observed cows raised with amp grazing found that soil carbon increased by 3.59 metric tons of carbon per hectare per year. It was enough carbon sequestered to offset other emissions and suggest that amp grazing can act as a net carbon sink, at least in the short term. When researchers modeled different greenhouse gas scenarios in North America, they found that if 50% of ranchers switched to amp grazing, it would have a far greater impact on emissions than if ranchers reduced the number of animals by 50%, but continued other land management practices like feedlot-based systems. While studies like these are very promising, there are still a lot of unknowns about amp grazing, especially when it comes to scalability. Outside of academic studies, it can be very difficult to measure changes in carbon levels in soil over time. And the amount of carbon stored can vary greatly based on the type of soil that's present, precipitation levels, and temperatures. Plus, perhaps most importantly, the amount of land it takes to raise cows with amp grazing is far greater than the amount of land that's needed to raise cows on feedlots. Using more land to raise cows could exacerbate losses of soil carbon especially if intact ecosystems are destroyed as a result. And the benefits of amp grazing wouldn't outweigh the environmental harm done. A lot of people think that they can't eat beef if they want to be environmentally... Sensitive. Yeah, environmentally sensitive. That's a good way to put it. What would you say to those people? What I would say is yes, you should eat less meat, 
Um, Grass-fed is good, less meat is even better. Widespread expansion of AMP grazing will likely depend on consumer demand and additional incentives for farmers to make the switch. But that hasn't stopped the likes of Heller, whose farm demonstrates how cows can be part of solutions to address climate change, not just the cause of it. I've been grazing for 35 years and I still haven't mastered it. But these guys are doing most of the work on the farm. I get to open the gates and say, have at it.